Heather from Hips and Pickin here. I am here and I'm going to talk about, a lot of you have asked, how do they know where to put what and in what condition will it be listed in? And so I have got Jensen here who's going to help me explain that to you. You guys are true blessing in my life. Thank you so much for helping me put this content out there to everyone. If you'd like to join these great people, please consider supporting me through my Patreon page. Check the link below. Okay, so we're in the bulk.com warehouse, and if you scan up, we're in the test and grade section of the bulk.com warehouse. This is Jensen. Um, Jensen, can you tell us a little bit about what you do here? Yeah, I'm the IT support technician for the facility. Okay. I kind of manage the network and, and everything. And you hang network. out in the warehouse and you know kind of what goes on, the kind of day-to-day -day workings. Yeah, every square foot I have to cover. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So he's going to kind of explain, um, we're looking for, when you go to bulk.com, you buy things that are new, like new, uninspected returns, my favorite category, um, scratch and dent and salvage. And so we're kind of here going to talk to Jensen about how do you even determine that? What do they go through? And he's going to explain what's going on behind us with some of the ladies and what they're doing. So if you just want to take it away. Absolutely. When things first come into the warehouse, they're received in off of truckloads that our clients send us of their product. Okay. Their returns, you know, whether it's uh, just clearance items that are still new on the shelf, got packaged up, sent back to their DC to figure out what do we do with now. They send that to us, sometimes directly from the stores with some of our clients. We also get stuff that just hasn't been inspected. So just, you know, returns that came back to the store, not really high value stuff so there's no real inspection process there there's process it's sticking the tote it goes back to their dc in a return section the dc doesn't even know what to do with it because they can't process that many okay. returns they just batch it up send it to us and that'll be like you know a dc salvage load or something like that okay. but it, it indicates to us we receive a manifest of the shipment that's coming in so we know what that load is going to be where it's coming from the kind of product that's and is be that the it. manifest you use to create your own manifest when you list on the bulk.com correct website? yeah whenever okay. well mostly yes, yes. that's mo that's a combination of what we receive from the client, but not all client data is complete, obviously. Sure. Some things fall through the cracks so and can't send everything over. So you check things yourself, and we that's kind of what's going on here. Exactly. And this is the receiving area where things okay. first come in off the dock. They get, you know, unpalletized, spread out, and, you know, there'll be two people working out of the same pallet, typically, okay. you know, that comes in. And they just sort the product. Whenever there's high volume stuff, like a lot of individual things, sure. we'll, you know, change up the process to best accommodate that product. Just that because... You got to think the clients, they're sending us their product because they don't know what to do with it. They just don't want to get some recovery on their end. Okay. By us remarketing and, you know, handling that process for them, we want to find the best way to handle that. Okay. Because we receive more stuff in, we're able to sell it for, you know, lower prices because then our cost is lower and everybody's still making money the whole, the whole time. Okay. So, um, stuff comes in here and then I see a bunch of different bins. Can you kind of explain that to me? Yeah. Depending on the condition of the item. So, like, if you open something, you see obviously that it's broken. Yeah. You're going to know to, to mark that either as donate or dispose based on what we call a, a matrix. So you do donate stuff? We do that, donate okay, things, yes. Good, There's some stuff okay. that has to be disposed of just per, you know, any kind of environmental regulations, per our client's requests. There's all pre-decided, you know, formats of okay. if this type of product is in, if it's in this condition, it goes to dispose. There's some okay. stuff that naturally goes to donate. Most of it is controlled through a, a cloud-based system that controls the disposition based on that pre-factored data. Okay. Some of it is decided here at the pod based on the receiver actually visualizing the product. Okay, so these ladies are looking at it going, okay, this is clearly broken or this is clearly scratched and dent. Um, this one is, you know, we can throw uh, in the, the like new or the brand new category because clearly that's exactly, exactly what if it, it is. Exactly. If it's still got shrink wrap on it, it has right. no real sign Never, of ever being Never, like the opened. manufacturer seal's not been broken, exactly. brand new. And then there's like the step below that where, you know, it may normally be sealed, okay. but it's been opened. But, but the all product the contents is still are inside, still everything's there. fine. There okay. may be a little bit of box damage, so that's like like new open box. Okay. Then okay. there's stuff with like minor cosmetic damage or stuff that is new, but is not in the original manufacturer's box. Okay. You know, we might have to rebox stuff just because it's so tattered. You can't possibly sell that and call it anything similar to new. Right. But everything inside is still fine. Gotcha. So, you know, that's a different grade. Then there's, right. you know, oh, you open it up, there's some cosmetic damage. Okay. And most of those steps aren't done at this point. There's some product that if it's any question of either it's new or it's not, it'll disposition based on that, usually based okay. on the value of the product. So like obviously a laptop would definitely get more scrutiny than right. uh, a small, you know. And you do a lot call. of testing of the electronics and stuff like that to yes. kind of figure consumer out. electronics, okay. uh, small appliances, large okay. appliances even. A lot of stuff we So we generally do. if you get a salvage pallet and it's got like a toaster and a blender and it's in salvage, 
not going to work probably. Probably not. Okay. No. But if it's in a like new or brand new condition, likelihood is going to, it's going to work. Very Maybe likely it's going to work. Absolutely. Okay. There All should, right. in fact, if it's in one of those conditions like new or, you know, brand new, there should be no question about whether or not it works. Okay. It right. should definitely work. The only time you're going to get in like in scratch and dent uh -huh. salvage stuff where there's questionability of maybe the condition of it, mm -hmm. those are going to be the ones where it might work and might be good for parts. Gotcha. It's gotcha. kind of a mix there. And they usually don't come in like their own boxes, uh -huh. which is kind of loose product. Right, right. Because right. you can't work, call that new. Right. Even it's if not, it's it doesn't come in the original packaging. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, that definitely helps. So um, back behind me, you can see a lot of these ladies kind of just visually checking and making sure that they're in the condition it's supposed to be in. Is it brand new? Is it like new? Is it uninspected returns? Is it scratch and dent? Is it salvage? Um, now, my question is, I'm a little bit selfish. I always buy the uninspected returns ones. Um, what kind... Why, why uninspected returns? Why would it be categorized that way? Does it come from the manufacturer considered un uninspected returns or they're not sure so they throw it in an uninspected returns category? It can come from a few different channels. Okay. The general concept of uninspected returns is that at no point along the process has this been actually checked. Okay, so nobody really looked at it, so we're gonna just move it along quicker because it takes too long exactly. to actually check. Each when you look at the value of an item, like you know, if it's a small stuffed doll and there's a box of 500 of them, you're not gonna individually inspect <laughs> check each 500 one, right? of them. Okay. So that might just pass through if well, you have a stack of that. That makes sense. Or you know, baby shoes or stuff like that. You know, a napkin set, very low value stuff. It doesn't make sense for us, for our clients, and for our buyers, for us to put the time and money into checking that along right. the process. Right. You'd have to basically charge more per pallet. Exactly. Your Otherwise money. we'd okay. be losing money just right. on the seconds it takes to go through each individual thing. Right. So that's okay. our honest way of saying, look, we haven't checked these. Nobody has. Okay. You're buying this as the product is uh -huh. knowing that we haven't looked at it. Cause I it's think just that's not why I like them a lot. It's it. the mystery, the exactly. treasure hunt aspect. Yeah. Well, awesome. I think we got some definite amazing information as far as how do we know what kind of condition it's in. And we want to thank Jensen so much for kind of filling us in on all of the inner workings at the warehouse itself. And so we're going to be putting more videos out about different aspects of the process of pallets and case and what product goes in there. And um, thank you so much. And remember, in the end, Jesus wins. If you love the content that I give, you can support me on Patreon. Just follow the link in the description below and I will offer you lots of exclusive things. You can be in the Hooked on Pickin' Coffee Club, have your Naven Lights, be in the Hooked on Pick and Reseller Club or the Reseller Pro Club. You get different perks for each club. So if you'd like to support me and my channel, please head on over to my Patreon account and start supporting. Thanks. This is Heather from HookedOnPickin.com. If you'd like to purchase my reseller guide, which is fully laminated three cards with checklists for Goodwill, eBay, and Amazon, please click the link below and you can purchase it now. The Goodwill card has over 80 different tips to show you how to walk through the store and what things I look for when walking through a thrift store to buy and resell items on Amazon, eBay, and other platforms. The Amazon reseller checklist has over six major steps and a lot of sub steps to look at in order to find out is my item going to be perfect for selling and reselling on Amazon. The eBay card also has six major steps to walk through to make sure you're choosing the right item that will be perfect for reselling and making money on eBay. Each card is fully laminated so that it cannot be destroyed easily, and it's perfect for taking with you while you're going on your picking and finding treasure hunting for reselling. I hope this is helpful, and I hope these cards help you to focus your energy to pick the right items to resell online to grow your reseller business. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you'd like to watch more of my videos, just click on them here. And if you'd like to learn more about the reseller world, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Thanks.